<laughs> Today, I'm very privileged and honored to be with one of my mentors, <laughs> Dr. Helen Barnes. Uh, she helped train me in OBGYN at the University of Mississippi <laughs> Medical Center, and she gave me her date of birth. December the 9th, 1928. So we did the math, and that means she's about to be 93 years old. And I she tell everybody is a legend. That I'm 90 years old. Because <laughs> she got tired of counting. <laughs> but uh, she said her memory is not great, perfect, but I think it's great. I think it's great. We've had a good visit. Um, she's legendary in Mississippi. She's been awarded all kinds of awards. You can see them all over her house. Um, she was the first African-American OBGYN in the state of Mississippi. Yeah. And, and you, that was a surprise to me. <laughs> <laughs> how did you find that out? Do you remember how you found that out? You know, I was sitting here earlier trying to figure out how I, in 1969, how I figured it out or how the knowledge came to me. And I, I'm- You didn't know I you were a trailblazer. To, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I still haven't figured out how in 1969. Uh, you were the first. <laughs> I was the first, yeah. And she grew up in, somewhat in Jackson. And then how did you end up in Pennsylvania? Or boarding school M mother um, you were in Catholic school here mother right? <laughs> put us in Catholic school here in Mississippi because she felt that Catholic school gave you a much better and broader education than the public schools and so she then registered both me and my brother at uh, Holy Ghost Catholic School, which is over on Cloister Street. And I could not get you there if you <laughs> paid me $5,000. <laughs> and then your uncle said, what did he say about your mother was not gonna stay here and work? Oh, he was gonna um, take her up north. Yeah, my um, my grandmother um, had my mother doing laundry, which was a usual thing, right, for young black women to do in Mississippi. And when Uncle Jack, who lived in New Jersey, would come to visit, he just was very upset that his sister would be down here doing other people's laundry. And so on one occasion when he came to, uh, to Jackson, he just took her back to New York. He just put her in the car and took her on back to New York. And so um, uh, that probably was Oh gosh, I have no idea how long ago that was. I really would have to sit here with a pen and <laughs> paper. And, uh, but you were young, you yes, stayed with your grandmother was, yeah, for a little while. But, but we stayed with our grandmother, my brother and I, mm -hmm. uh, until mother found a job. And then when she found a job, then of course she came back and, and, uh, and got us. And fortunately found a boarding school that the same sisters of the Blessed Sacrament who went, who did the Holy Ghost School here, uh, ran in Pennsylvania. And so we were then put in a boarding school um, in um, Cornwell Heights, Pennsylvania with the same sisters. So we've had a um, pretty good education. Right, <laughs> right. And your brother went into the military. Yep. And then how did you decide medicine how did you decide medical school you said i, I, I guess i'll be a doctor 
<laughs> you taught your friends, so I, what are you going to do? And you said, I guess I'll be a doctor. I, you know, <laughs> it's it's the strangest thing, though, that when you're, when you're sitting around talking with a group of folks, and folks say, well, what are you going to do? And somebody's going to be a nurse, and somebody's going to be this, and somebody's going to do... You say, well, I'm just going to be a doctor. And so, you know, I decided that um, I could probably go to medical school, go to Howard University and become a doctor. Since I knew something about Howard University and, um, and its education. Mm -hmm. and, and she spent all of undergrad and medical school and uh, residency in OBGYN at Howard. At Howard University. In Washington. Yeah. yeah. And then what pulled you back to Mississippi? <laughs> What pulled me back to Mississippi? Was it your? Was well, probably you, my grandmother. And who, she was still here. Yeah, who was still here in Jackson, and who said that if anybody else could work in Mississippi, that I could also, and so why not find a place that I would consider living in? And there was a person getting ready to leave their practice in Greenwood, Mississippi, which is up north. Mm -hmm. And uh, I visited that office and just fell in love with it and decided that would be the thing that I would do, would be to come back and work in Greenwood, Mississippi, um, pay back what I considered my indebtedness to the state of Mississippi for allowing me to borrow the $5,000 to be educated and to actually learn how to practice medicine and to do surgery and to take care of, um, take care of other people. And so you were in Greenwood, you said probably about 10 years. Yes, I was in Greenwood at least 10 years. And then you and came maybe to even Jackson a little bit more. Right. in private practice here. Right. And uh, eventually, back to university, that's where I met you. Yeah, back to the university, I think in, and I want to say 72. You did a lot of, I think you did a um, lot of. Because I did work a lot both of work places, in right? Private here. and. Yeah, I did. Um, I did work here in uh, at the, at, uh, at the Baptist Hospital, as well as um, at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Because <laughs> um, I can remember walking across that bridge <laughs> from the university over to the mall. To the mall. Yes. You uh, know, many a day. Yeah. I, I told yeah. her when I went into practice that. Uh, private practice when I finished and the nurses at Baptist Hospital who knew Dr. Barnes they said <laughs> she ran a tight ship you better be on your mind your P's and Q's <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Barnes she didn't yeah, take any flat did not for anybody take no, 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 no. that's how you and always had, taught us yes always straight as an arrow that's right as straight as an arrow <laughs> um, and yes, then indeed. when I was in practice you were retiring, and I know that other doctors in town said the same thing, that you personally would choose who you were going to pass your patients on That's to, right. and that you would come to our office and hand deliver, and hand deliver their paper the chart. Paper chart. <laughs> That's right. And, and I and I wrote up I hand wrote all of my charts. Handwritten, hand beautiful hand handwriting. <laughs> There's no penmanship like that anymore. <laughs> Your beautiful handwriting, yes, long hand, but um, very much yes. so. And you would know who would take care of your patient the way you would take care of your patient, That's and right. so you would hand deliver. Hand them. deliver them, <laughs> and I would say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Now, I want yes, you indeed. to take good care yes, of this patient. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I want you to do exactly what she tells you to do. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> you think some of that, um, those Catholic, the Catholic nuns, the, the straight, the straight 
Oh, Toe the yes, line yes. that I, rubbed I off think, on you. <laughs> I, you know, it's 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 a hard thing to to lose when you go to. In fact, I tell people on Fridays, you know, people come you here on, on Fridays, Friday. and I'm eating fish on Friday, and I said I went to a Catholic school. That's right. And what do you eat on Friday? That's what you eat. You on eat Friday. fish on Friday, and so it's a way. That's the way you know, it's done. When you go to Catholic school, they teach you a certain way. And Mother swore the reason that she sent us to Catholic school was because they taught better than they did at public schools and they taught more relative information that you needed to have to make it right. in your life. Self-discipline, right. motivation. motivation. That's right. Well, yeah. I think you so, had to be motivated to achieve all that you achieved, you know, in life. And also okay. your heart, your heart for helping those less fortunate. She's been a volunteer at Boyd Elementary for years and years. That's, that was one of the things though that I, that I think that the Sisters of the Sacrament taught us, you know, that you do share. Yeah things with other people. You learn what they need to know that you have and then you share it with them. Because nobody can make it alone. Mm. Nobody can make it alone. That's awesome. Yeah. You just you know, you just have to grit. <laughs> and, and I'm bear. sure it meant a lot yeah. for those for those kids to see you having been the first and achieving all these well, things is, and working what, hard. This is what so many of my friends told me at the time too that would see me at Boyd. You right. know, this is you know, Dr. Mars, these kids are so proud of you. Yes. You know, and um, you know, we we just we don't know what we would do if you were and I said, Well, you know, they they, they learn, you know, but they learn from me, they learn from you and they learn from the community. Right. But we've got to be willing to teach them. We really do. We have to be willing to teach them. They just need yeah. people to care, yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. To care for them. And, um, and, and, and children learn. It's amazing what they learn from just being around you as you do things and as you perform and as you write and as you do read books and right. every, yeah yeah it's amazing what they learn and then they can then teach this to their little sisters and their little you should see them dragging them around <laughs> and, and sitting them down with the little books you know and now we will read <laughs> like Dr. Martin said. <laughs> Oh, and that's, now we uh, will read. <laughs> I, I think that's, I asked Dr. Barnes what her legacy is, what it, she wants it to be. And that is your legacy, your gift to others. You're caring, you're giving, your mentorship. Mentorship, mm -hmm. yeah. You're yeah, a trailblazer, you're Dr. Barnes. <laughs> Well, I tried to be a trailblazer. I tried. I tried. Yes, indeed. You, you have. You yes, fought indeed. the good fight. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I really tried to be. I mean, you know, you know things that need to be done, and so you get up and get at it and put your, as the man said, you put your shoulder to the wheel, <laughs> and then Keep off you go. And, that's right. Well, thank yes, you so indeed. much for oh, well, sharing this are, time with me. You're such oh, a blessing. Well, I'm so such an proud example. that you came by to see me to say today. I'll turn this off. Because I just knew something special was going to happen today. Oh, <laughs> love it.